So what's really nice about this picture actually is it shows that incomes were higher than expected, but it also shows that the personal consumption expenditures were lower than expected. That means people's incomes, their paychecks are getting bigger at a faster rate than their expenses are this past month. But then when you start to drill down and you, you factor out things like uh, gasoline, oil, um, food, milk, you know, eggs, um, things were flat, right? 0%, 0.1%. Now, remember, we also have these annual numbers, but what these annual numbers of 2.6 do is they look at the last 12 months, right? But a lot of, because of a lot of the volatility, a lot of economists are actually taking the current monthly number and multiplying by 12 to kind of get an idea of what might be happening in the future. And so if you take zero or even 0 0.1 and multiply it by 12, I mean, that's well below the 2% uh, target that the Fed has. So, you know, investors have priced in, if we take a look at what investors are looking at, they've priced in two uh, rate hikes in the next, um, before the end of the year. So they, they have one priced in for September uh, and then one priced in again for December. So that's a little bit different. The Fed has been quite hawkish, whether it be Jerome Powell or the other Fed presidents saying that, hey, we want to make sure inflation is tamed before we change anything. Uh, you know, the Bank of England did hit its inflation target rate of 2% and decided not to lower interest rates. So they really wanted to hammer in that inflation control rather than respond too quickly. At the same time, there was a dissenting Fed president that was interviewed this past week that came in and said, hey, we're going to keep our eyes on any sort of recessionary pressures and make sure that uh, we act accordingly. So she was a little bit more on the dovish side. So yeah, investors aren't quite taking the Fed at their word that they're only going to do one rate drop. They've priced in two.